We're going to continue trying to understand the Gauss's law in differential form. And of course, in the last several videos, we understand this part of the equation. Now we're going to connect it to the right side of the equation. But before we do that, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to come over here and again use the integral form of Gauss's law to find out what the strength of the electric field is at this location. This is inside a spherical shaped object that has charge all throughout the sphere and of course how much charge let's say that q amount of charge was put inside the sphere so it's evenly distributed everywhere throughout the sphere and the radius of the sphere is r sub naught and we want to know the strength of the field at a distance r away from the center so any arbitrary point somewhere between the very center of the circle and the edge of the circle well it's not a circle it's a sphere so the center of the sphere to the edge of the sphere what would be the electric field strength there so from gauss's law right here we know that the integral, the surface integral of E dot dA, and of course that would be the area of the Gaussian surface which is drawn here in the dashed line, and this represents a sphere inside, of course, the bigger sphere, and that equals Q inside divided by epsilon sub naught. All right, and so E dot dA is simply the strength of the field at this location times the surface area of that sphere, so it would be E times 4 pi little r squared because that's the distance from the center of the sphere to the Gaussian surface and that would be equal to the q inside and so that would be q that's put in the whole sphere times the ratio of how much charge is in here divided by how much charge is in there or in other words it's equal to the total charge divided uh, times the volume of the inside sphere times the volume of the outside sphere so that would be equal to the ratio of four thirds pi little r cubed, that would be the volume of the inside sphere, divided by 4 thirds pi big r cubed, that would be the volume of the outside sphere. Of course, that will give us the amount of charge that's inside the Gaussian surface, and we divide that by epsilon sub naught. All right, so can we simplify some things? Yes, we can. The 4 thirds pi will cancel out right here. The r squared here will cancel out with the r cubed there. It just gives us an r. And uh, let's see here. Now, if we want to use the uh, epsilon, the E right here, we can say that E is equal to the charge Q times what do we have left. We have an R in the numerator. In the denominator, we have a 4 pi epsilon sub naught, which is 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught is, of course, equal to K. And we still have the R sub naught cubed, R sub naught cubed. And so that is equal to, uh, we can say, K qr divided by r sub naught cubed. So that's the electric field strength at that particular location. Now, let's go over to this side of the equation. Now we have to use uh, the divergence electric field. And remember now, since we're dealing with the sphere, we probably want to use spherical coordinates. So this is the equation, the divergence of the electric field in spherical coordinates. But again, since the field is only uh, changing in the radial direction, not in the angle theta, which is going around the circle like this, not in the angle phi. Uh, take that back. Phi again goes around the, like this, the theta goes like this, but since we don't have any changes in both of those directions, those components will be zero. So we're just going to take the diversion of V right here. Now we have, the div we have this electric field strength here using this part of the equation, so you can see the connection. So now we're going to say that the divergence of E is equal to 1 over R squared times a partial derivative of R uh, with respect to R of R squared times E sub R. And E sub R is right here, which is KQR, KQR divided by R sub naught cubed. All right, so now we realize that kq and r sub naught cubed are all constants, they can come out. So this is equal to uh, kq over, we still have the r squared there, that stays where it is. We have the r sub naught cubed times a partial derivative with respect to the small r of now r squared times r, which is r cubed. All right, when we take the partial derivative of that, we get 3r squared. Uh, so we get, so this becomes equal to kq over r squared r sub naught cubed times 3r squared. That's the partial derivative of this r cubed. And then we multiply this together, and then we realize we have an r squared in the numerator and r squared in the denominator. That cancels out. 
So we're left with a 3kq over r sub naught cubed. All right, so that is the divergence of the electric field. And now, according to that, that should equal the charge density divided by epsilon sub naught. All right, so what is the charge density? So let me make some room here. So now I have to figure out the charge density. And of course, the charge density is, of course, Q divided by the volume. That's Q divided by the total volume of the sphere, which will be 4 thirds pi r cube, r sub naught cube. All right, there we go. And uh, what I could do is I could say, well, let's see here. I can bring the 3 to the top. So this is equal to 3 times Q divided by 4 pi r sub naught cube. All right. So this here, which is the divergence of the electric field, and of course we knew what the electric field was because we used the integral form of the, of the Gaussian equation to find the electric field at that location. I then took the divergence of that and I got this. That should now equal the charge density inside the sphere divided by epsilon sub naught. Well, let's see if that's indeed the case. So now we're going to write down this equation right here. So we have the divergence of the electric field should equal the charge density divided by epsilon sub naught. The divergence electric field right here is 3 kq divided by r sub naught cubed, and that should equal the charge density, which is this right here, which is 3q divided by 4 pi r sub naught cubed. And don't forget the epsilon sub naught, that's still there, so we write the epsilon sub naught right there. Now, notice that 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught, that's equal to k. So we can write that 3kq over r sub naught cubed is equal to 3k because 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught is equal to k times q divided by r sub naught cubed. And notice what we got. The left side equals the right side, which now means that we now have an idea of what the right side of the equation means. The divergence of E is simply the change of the electric field as a function of position at that particular location. And so we want to know what, how fast, not how fast, that's wrong, that's a function of time, it has nothing to do with time, how much the electric field is changing with respect to displacement in radial direction, so to speak, at that particular location. That's what the left side of the equation means. And the right side of the equation is simply the density of the charge inside that volume divided by epsilon sub naught. And the density of the charge is simply the total charge divided by the volume. If we then take that divided by epsilon sub naught, we can show you that the two sides of the equation are equal, which then shows you that this equation works for the Gauss's law, except in a different form. In the form where we take the, diff the uh, the divergence of the electric field, which gives you the change of the field as a function of position at that particular location, it also means it's the flux coming out minus the flux going in divided by the volume of that particular location, as we saw in the previous video. But now you realize how the two equations seem to work perfectly fine to figure out the electric field strength, direction, and the charge density, no matter which equation you use. If you're still interested, I'm going to now show you some, a couple of more examples, one with a cylinder, one with a sphere, and how it can actually work this out in a good way. All right, hopefully this is beginning to make sense to you.